Hey, good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. I have a question for you. How does this latex or rubber glove have to do with the question, who is my neighbor? You'll find out in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Hey, good morning, and welcome to this week's online lesson. Now, the government recently has extended our stay-at-home order, and so we are not able to meet for a few more weeks. And so we'll be doing some more online lessons as we go through this time of, of separation. This week, our lesson comes from a, a story or a parable that you're very familiar with, or many of you will be very familiar with. It's from the Good Samaritan. Now, the Good Samaritan is a paradoxical story where the hero in the story is kind of an unlikely hero. He's not the one you would think would be the hero. And sometimes it takes an unlikely hero for us to sit up and pay attention. But throughout history, Jesus does interact with Samaritans a few times in his ministry. But the Samaritans, though they were from Samaria, they were a result of the Jews being exiled into the area of Assyria. And they intermixed with that group of people, thus creating the Samaritans. But they started out with the Assyrians and the Jews. And so some Jews especially might refer to these Samaritans as half-breeds. And half-breeds are generally not welcomed in any kind of a group. You know, anyone that is not purely a part of a group sometimes have difficulties being welcomed in a group. You know, sometimes someone of a different race of a different culture, maybe someone not originally of the same town. All those kinds of situations can result in someone not being welcomed to a group. And so the Jews looked down on the Samaritans. For the Jews, they were the people of God. They were God's loved ones, if you will. And the, and the Samaritans, they were the half-breeds. And so the Samaritans were not looked at upon the Jews as being very likely liked by God. And so as we begin this lesson. I want us to pray. Father, we just uh, thank you for the opportunity that we have to come into people's living rooms or wherever they're at and be able to bring the word to them. I pray that as we have this time uh, that we're not able to be together, that we're still able to be uplifted, that your enemy or that the enemy being the devil is not uh, causing us to be down in our faith that we are being motivated by different things that we're uh, getting from outside sources and your spirit that's that's there living inside of us and so father i just pray that these uh, next coming weeks whatever it is that you would continue to put it on our hearts to be serving to be able to see what opportunities are out there that we can be able to go and, and help people just like this uh, samaritan was able to help that person that's on the side of the road as we'll see Father, we just uh, thank you so much for your word, and we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness, and it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. And so as we begin this lesson, I want us to dive in to the text. Now it comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 27 through 35. We're going to look at it in three different parts. So we'll see this first part now. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? What's written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? And he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. And so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And so we have that question that we end with going to be kind of our, our key part of this first point. But in the text we see we have this expert of the law asking about eternal life. You know, he's no dummy as he's defined as an expert in the law. So he's able to understand, and as we see in the text, he's also able to give the right answer. 
And he asks the question, and instead of Jesus telling him the answer, he does a great way of teaching it, that being Jesus. He asks a question in return. And the man answers, and he answers from the book of Deuteronomy, where he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, Jesus commends him on his answer, and he says that he will live if he practices this command. So in order to make sure that he was fulfilling this command, the man is saying in a modern way of talking or of asking, he says, hold on. If I love God with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind, and I love my neighbor as myself, then I will live. So then tell me, how do you define who my neighbor is? And again, instead of answering his question of saying it's Joe, Wilma, Bob, and, and Frank, he uses a parable. And this is the parable. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And when he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for the extra expense you may have. Now this main character in the parable is a man who is traveling down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now I've been told there's lots of places to hide along that road. And so this traveler is attacked and he's basically left for dead. But then we see this priest come by and the priest doesn't help. You know, through the ages, priests or clergymen are generally a respected profession. And in that day, it was much the same way. And for Jesus to use a respectable profession for an example of who wouldn't help might have raised this man's eyebrows. He might have thought, what? The priest didn't help? That's hard to believe. But next comes a Levite, who is from the tribe of Levi, but importantly, he's also a Jew. And Levites were the tribe of priests, which may have been part of the reason that Jesus chose to use a Levite as the second character. But just like the priest, the Levite passes on the other side, not helping his fellow man. Now here we have two Jews, and the lesson is being told to a Jew, an expert of the law. That's a Jew. And I wonder if this man was surprised at the Levite not helping out this other man. But thirdly, we have this unlikely hero who comes to save the day. Now, he wasn't an underdog in abilities, for he had plenty of money, and he also had plenty of supplies. But however, he was the underdog because he is the unlikely hero going to help out this man who is in a Jewish area, and he is a non-Jew. And so as the text point out, he bandaged his wounds. He took care of him by taking him to have a place to stay. And what I gather from this text, he also stayed with him a night because he said on the second day he told the innkeeper. And so I think he stayed with him a whole night taking care of him. I hadn't really ever saw that before now. But one key in this detail is the fact that he went to the man. He went over to him. The other two passed by on the other side. They weren't going to have anything to do with him. But the Samaritan went to him. And one of the big keys in helping someone out is going to them. And we'll see that in a little bit later. But he also told the owner of the inn that he would take care of any bills that came up as he, the man was staying there. And he would pay for them once he returned. But then we have a follow-up with this. And Jesus says, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert of the law says the one who had mercy on him. Again, I said, he was no dummy. And so Jesus tells him to go and do likewise. So the, Jesus asked, so who is the neighbor? And then his answer was identifying the one who showed mercy. And he tells him to go and do likewise. 
You know, in the past when I've gone over this parable, I've looked at those different characters and kind of broken them down a bit. But as I was preparing for this one, I saw something different in this. And after the story is concluded and Jesus and the man are in conversation, Jesus then asks the man, who is my neighbor? And after the man answers correctly and says, yep, that's the one, the Samaritan reaches out in the, in the story. And do you know who the neighbor really is? It doesn't matter if Jesus used a Samaritan, a Philistine, your worst enemy, someone of our own culture's worst enemy. It doesn't matter who it was. The person who is the neighbor was to find this. And this was the eye-opening, almost mind-blowing thing for me. It's the neighbor is the one who removes the barrier. The one who goes to the person who is in need. You know, the other obstacles about race, religion, safety, culture, worthiness of being able to be uh, helped are all taken down, are all ripped away, are all taken off in order to help. You know, Jesus is trying to make the law relevant and real for this exact moment. But now, how can you be a good Samaritan? So here are a few random acts of kindness you may want to put into practice. Donate old towels or blankets to an animal shelter. Leave a gas gift card at a gas pump. Leave quarters at the laundromat. Surprise a neighbor with freshly baked cookies or treats. Encounter an employee of a place you go to who is especially kind and take an extra five minutes to tell the manager. Check up on a church member, maybe saying hi or seeing how they're doing and if they need anything. Recently, a couple of members of our, of our church in Garden City went around and took painted rocks and also left notes on people's uh, porches and that was such a, a great thing and a surprise to, to receive. Maybe write a comment on a friend's social media account. Maybe write to a former teacher who made a difference in your life. As you can see there's a, a website there that you can see many different random acts of kindness. But though random acts of kindness are great, but they're generally planned things that you can make sure and take time out of your life to, to plan and make sure that they get done. And it's easy to remove the barriers for something that you plan. But what about situations like this? That as a man was traveling along, he didn't plan on helping this person. He didn't plan on taking a day or more out of his, his schedule to go and help someone. And so looking back at the text, I want us to think about who is my neighbor? You know, in that very beginning question that I introduced this lesson with about the glove and said, how does this pertain to who is my neighbor? Well, the glove is a barrier, oftentimes to protect us. And sometimes we go on the opposite side of the road in order to hope to protect us instead of willing to go out and to go to someone who is in need and to spend time with them, to remove the barrier in order to make sure that their needs are met. And though one of the things that Jesus said was to love your neighbor, one of the ways in which we can love is to make sure that there are no barriers in order to be able to help people who are in need. And so I want you to reflect and see if any of these barriers are ways that maybe prevent you from helping your neighbor. Maybe it's an age difference. Maybe you're young and they're old, or maybe they're old and you're young, or Maybe you just don't feel able to communicate with them because of an age. Maybe it's their gender. Maybe you just don't feel comfortable with that. Maybe it's their race. Maybe it's their culture. Maybe it's some, how someone fixes their hair. Maybe they have colored hair. Maybe they have certain areas that's shaved and certain areas that's long, and you just think that's not the way it should be. Or maybe they're just so prim and proper, the fact that you don't want to reach out because you feel like there's a barrier there. Maybe it's sexual preference that they have. Maybe they have tattoos. Maybe it's, it's amount of tattoos. Maybe it's even any tattoos. Maybe it's tattoos of where they're placed on. Maybe it's a type of tattoos. Or even similarly, maybe it's piercings. Maybe they have piercings on their body. Maybe they have a lot of them. Maybe it's in certain places. And so those are barriers in order to allow you to talk to them or reach out to them or help them. Maybe it's how someone dresses. Maybe they dress in dark clothes. Maybe they are very neat and you are not comfortable approaching someone that's very neat because that's not your way of talking or your way of approaching them. Maybe it's the fact that they have questionable material on their clothes oftentimes. So name your barrier. What is it? You, know, you might be thinking, 
Jared, what if I'm not comfortable approaching them because of blank? And maybe that blank might be filled in with a lack of knowledge. Or maybe the fact that they've done something to you. Or maybe the fact that they did something to someone in your family. And that one hits home for me because just this week, I had my daughter fall on the street as she was riding a bike. And she really hurt herself. She was crying. And you know what our neighbor did who was probably in his 60s? He didn't go out to help. He didn't ask how she was doing. But he laughed. And you know, for a parent, that really offended me. For someone not to be willing to go and help, but the fact that they did almost the opposite and laughed at someone being hurt. Now that person is a person that I still am expected to love. I'm expected to tear down that barrier, and if he needed help, God expects me to help him. But what about gender preference? Maybe that's a different, something different than what your gender preference is. Maybe what about if they have an immoral life? Maybe they cuss, they drink, they do other things that are sinful. Maybe they do other things that are just going against God. But you know what all those things are? Those are barriers. And the Good Samaritan story demonstrates us to us that the Samaritan was willing to take down the barrier in order to be a good neighbor. You know, barriers of fear, of differences, of pride, all those things may have to come down. And so what barriers must you take down in order to help your neighbor? So who is our neighbor? You know, most of us have heard the story and we know the answer to that. We know that it's not just the person next door, not just the person two houses down, not just the person that's across the street, not just the person that's on our friends list or that we know in our contacts and our phones, but our neighbor is anyone who has a need. And we are to treat anyone as a neighbor. We are to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, our soul, our strength, and our mind, and to love them, being our neighbor, as ourself. So I leave you with this. Don't let the barriers, that whatever you define them as, the barriers that you have in life, don't let them be something that prevents you from being the Good Samaritan. Don't pass by on the other side like the Levite and the priest. But the Good Samaritan, the unlikely hero, was the one that we should emulate. The one who was willing to go and be near and put in the time and be the neighbor. The one who removed the barrier, the barrier of fear, the barrier of safety, the barrier of concern, maybe the barrier of a schedule even. Whatever that barrier is, remove that and I want us to be a good neighbor. During this time, whether it's the during the COVID-19 or wherever it might be, you know, check on people that you know. Check on people that you don't know. If you see somebody that's in need, be a neighbor to them. How can you help? What can you do? How can you encourage them? How can you meet their needs? Whatever it is. So who is your neighbor? Anyone. And how are you going to be able to remove the barriers? By being the Good Samaritan, by going to them. Thank you for tuning in this week, and have a great week.